Hello and welcome to this uh, special CNBC Africa debate from uh, Kigali, Rwanda. My name is Godfrey Motizwa. Now, the 11th Quita Izina, or if you don't know the language, uh, that's uh, the gorilla naming ceremony, took place earlier this month. And uh, that was spotlighting one of Rwanda's key successes since the end of the genocide more than two decades ago. Today, it is the biggest foreign currency in and Rwanda at $303 million. But the plan is to hike that to $860 million by the end of next year. The question we're asking is, is that too ambitious? And importantly, what is the strategy to reach it? Let me introduce my guest for this discussion. And I'll start on my immediate right, uh, Ambassador uh, Yamina Karitanyi, Chief Tourism Officer, Rwanda Development Board. Thank you very much indeed for joining us today. Thank you. Should I probably take the opportunity as well to say congratulations because you are to be the new U ambassador to the UK, so congratulations. Thank you. Okay, and then next to her is uh, Jackie Sebageni. She's managing director of 1000 Hills Expeditions. Thank you, Jackie, for coming. Thank you. And last but not least, uh, John Mirenge, CEO of Rwanda. Thank you, Thank you sir. Thank uh, Ambassador, I want to start with you. Like I said, I mean, the numbers I'm giving there are huge numbers, especially when you consider that those numbers came almost from nowhere to where we are today. But even more, I think, uh, uh, important is the fact that you are setting yourself a very high target. Let's outline the target to reach that $860 million by the end of next year. Well, thank you. Um, I think the targets, um, one, were set by EDPRS2. And the reason is uh, because there's clear opportunity for growth in the industry. As you mentioned, we started from a very low base. Uh, but in the span of uh, 10, 15 years, we've seen numbers continuing to grow and double, which um, tells government that um, the, the reach to 860 million, uh, yes, it's ambitious, but it's not impossible. Um, it's not impossible because um, yeah, tourism is such an interesting field, mm. and it, it actually tells the story of Rwanda um, rising. Absolutely. Um, it, um, it gives us many opportunities to not only uh, bring in revenues, but um, tell the world um, to, to come and experience Rwanda and get to know Rwanda. So the, the numbers, yes, they are pretty aggressive. Um, are we going to be able to reach 860 million? Mm -hmm. Uh, we will, maybe not in 2017, sure. uh, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a target that is reachable, yeah. uh, maybe with a longer span. Absolutely. Um, why do I say that? Um, we have the CEO of uh, Rwanda Air who's here today, and uh, part of their plan is to help us reach those targets. Yes. Um, so I think. If you look at the involvement from all stakeholders, whether it be um, private sector, um, the infrastructure that is needed to help us achieve those targets, um, the, the investment that have been coming in yeah. um, throughout the, the, the years, the past years, and the ones that we're looking at moving forward, yeah. and the story of conservation. Because Absolutely. I always say the story of our tourism is a story of the successes that we've seen in conservation. Yeah. That also is bringing in uh, revenues, um, it's giving us more partners that are willing to work with us on, yeah. on conservation matters. Yeah. And those numbers can also in a way be counted yeah. um, to reach the, the, the 860 million. And one of the key planks of that strategy is around the MICE concept, isn't it? Let's talk a little bit about that and how far you have gone in that. I've been traveling around Kigali and I see the construction that going on. I have seen the convention center taking shape. I have also seen the other hotels coming up. How far is that strategy and uh, how, how, what are the key targets there? So MICE is definitely one of the major pillars in, in uh, helping us reach those targets, those, those uh, revenue uh, targets that we have. Why? Because um, as, as we all know, uh, MICE participants or conference uh, participants, uh, conference or business travelers uh, tend to spend more than leisure yeah. uh, travelers. So uh, for that, we need to put emphasis on making sure we are accommodating more and more uh, opportunities to see conferences coming into into Rwanda. Mm. Uh, we are a safe country. We are a country that is really building and, and putting in the infrastructure that's needed. Yeah. Um, we are now a, a connected uh, country. Yeah. Uh, air, road, 
uh, very easy to reach Rwanda with many options. So MICE definitely is, is one of the, the, the key priorities we're giving to, yeah. to help us achieve the targets. Um, we've seen about 51 million come in f last year. 51 doll million dollars. Dollars um, from last year. The year before it was about 48, 49 million. Mm. Uh, increasing is uh, increasing numbers, increasing um, uh, conferences. The caliber of conferences that we are seeing yeah. coming is is also an exciting. Um, uh, development. Yeah, and we're going to talk about some of those conferences. Let me bring in John here because John, you are an important part of realizing that vision. But you also have to meet your own targets in order to ensure that your contribution matches the expectations from the RDB. Let's talk about your ability to meet those targets you from from your side. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll probably start by saying that uh, the, the 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 Rwanda we see is a true replica of the country's spirit, like she has said. Uh, the growth that we have realized over the last five years are actually, in some cases, you know, one would think those would just be dreams. I mean, we're talking of a base, from again, a low base, yeah. five years ago, of less than 100,000 passengers a year on our network, to in excess of half a million just over four years down the road. Mm -hmm. And this is being targeted to get to about a million in the next three years. Right. And if you were following events recently, as recent as yesterday or the day before yesterday. Absolutely. We took you are adding capacity. Exactly. We are adding capacity. We are taking on wide bodies, air buses that will take us through to China, through to Europe, and beyond destinations that we had been serving. If you look at the trend of tourism and tourists, especially quality tourists, yeah. China is rising very fast. And as a huge contributor to the, to the continent of Africa, Europe is, al is always there. The US is good. Mm -hmm. So we are now uh, heading to where the, the, the tourists come from mm -hmm. and offering them right. our product. Yeah. So definitely with those efforts, we will be contributing directly to I want to understand uh, I want to understand how your journey has been John in terms of uh, the growth that you have seen has it been hard getting those people to come through to Rwanda let me say uh, again Africa is still one of the least connected least served that is in true. terms of aviation yeah so uh, you just need to do the right thing and that's exactly what we did deploy safe new products in terms of uh, assets, in terms of uh, aircraft, yeah. uh, re create a, a hub spoke concept yeah. where Chigari becomes the hub. Absolutely. And we're able to connect West Africa, Southern Africa, yeah. then beyond where we had been going to where we'll be going in terms of China, Europe. Yeah. So, it hasn't been hard at all. We but against very in. stiff competition, John, because you're competing against Nairobi, and we know what Nairobi has been over the past few years, and we know what Kenya stands for. <coughs> Excuse me. The, the, the beauty about uh, our industry is that uh, the more the merrier. You know, <laughs> we, 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 there is always some pent up demand mm -hmm. that has always been stuck in there. Sure. That probably the other competitors have, hadn't been addressing. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we went out as our, <coughs> our, as our strategy to identify those niches. And we've been growing from those niche markets that we, we yeah. took on. Yeah. And let me tell you, uh, uh, clients have always wanted a choice when they want to travel. True. And we're offering that. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. we have not disappointed. I think that's the most important thing. So the yeah. numbers are growing. It doesn't mean that the others are not growing. Of course. The continent is one of the fastest growing uh, in terms of economic indicators. Yeah. So meaning that those that previously never uh, flew, uh, never traveled by air have now been carved in. Absolutely. So we're getting more and more people 
able to travel by air, yeah. which is a very good uh, indicator. Yeah, and we, of course we all know the stories of how to travel around Africa, where you fly from Johannesburg to go to Dubai in order to be able to go to Lagos or something like that. Crazy, but uh, I'm hoping that you are addressing that. Jackie, I saved you for last, because first of all, I wanted the evidence of what's happening around the government drive to try to get more tourists to come. But I wanted to talk to you about what you are seeing on the ground as the person who is receiving the tourist and taking that tourist around. How has it been your end? Are, we, are you overwhelmed? Let me ask first. Well, let me go back to what Ambassador Yamina said. Um, it, it, they are ambitious targets that you talked about. However, we are an ambitious nation, and we are a nation of, of achievers. As um, private sector, thank you for, for allowing me, um, we have been so well served in terms of security. Security is number one, really, for any... 100%. Absolutely. Um, as a tourist destination and as a tourist operator, one has to remember that a leisure traveler has the whole world to choose from. Um, but we are fortunate that, one, we are accessible, thank you to, to Rwanda and the other airlines. <laughs> Two, it is secure, as I mentioned earlier. And um, we have the products. We have amazing products. Um, you talked, you know, it's, you talked of uh, conferencing, and uh, yeah. that's a huge one. But besides that, we've got um, an improved Akagero, who no we now have lions there. Mm -hmm. We have... Two lions. Seven. Seven lions. Seven. Ooh, you, behind. you counted only the male. <laughs> we have two male and seven. <laughs> and five female. Um, we have a forest that dates back to the Ice Age and a biodiversity to match. Um, and in there we have primates and we have orchids and we have birds. Um, we have 227 kilometers um, of trails and, and uh, biking, for, for walking and biking mm -hmm. along Lake Kivu. Um, we have the iconic uh, gorillas, of course. We have almost extinct yeah. uh, golden monkeys. I could go on. The list is yeah. endless. Yeah, I, th I think I'm realizing that actually I have started off on the wrong track because I'm allowing you to market it. You're going to market <laughs> as much as you can. But I want to see if you could illustrate for us in terms of the growth of your own company versus uh, the, 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 all these attractions that you're talking about. What has been the journey like for you? And what kind of tourists are you seeing? And I've got a, a, a trick question that I'm going to pose to the ambassador, that's why I'm asking you that question. Um, we began with short itineraries, short stay. We used to call them the Gorilla Express. And, um, but it has always, you know, and we've gone into longer stays. Um, the kind of tourists that we're looking at are high end. And um, so, so basically, um, uh, lower numbers, but higher yields, and so on. Yeah. So um, th that is the kind of tourists that we have been getting, and and we continue to get. And how has been your company performing? It's been a fabulous journey of growth. It really has, and I think I speak not only to myself, about myself, but the other operators as mm. well. We started the association with only a handful of operators. We're now over forty. Um, we started with almost no guides, and now we have, um, the association has 76 members. Wow. So that is growth. Absolutely. Ambassador, the trick question is this one. What is the strategy? Are we trying to get any type of tourist who would love to come to Rwanda? Because we know Rwanda is one of the more liberal when it comes to traveling around the continent. You get your passport, at the, sorry, your visa at the airport if you're an African. Or are we targeting the high end that she says she has now seen a gradual shift to? We're not discriminating. You are not? We are not. Mm -hmm. Everyone is welcome. Um, again, remember, beyond the tourism targets, we also um, are a country that wants to tell its story to the world. Mm -hmm. So the backpackers are welcome. But again, mm -hmm. the strategy to reach those targets will have to uh, prioritize high high yield um, uh, customers. Right, um, because you're a small place as well. We, right, we, are, we also have uh, capacity limitations. Mm -hmm. So we are not looking at you know, welcoming 100,000 uh, visitors every, yeah. every week. Yeah. Uh, but we want to make sure that those that are coming yeah. are, are leaving the impact that, that we need. And for that, we look to the private sector to come up with the right packages. Um, so how do we how do we go beyond the Gorilla Express, for example? Yeah. And we're not just getting um, those coming to, to uh, trek. The gorilla spent yeah. one or two nights and go back. 
uh, how do we enhance what we are selling? How do we make sure that uh, our economy is, is also ready to absorb uh, the revenues? That's true. Uh, so it's, it's, it's still, there's still work to be done. Yeah, but that but may be a challenge, isn't it? Because uh, David Smith, writing in The Guardian, I think when he covered the Kuita dinner ceremony, spoke about the fact that in Rwanda, you will probably find more, many more Western accents than in many African capitals. And that's a function, I think we've been talking about it, the theme here of security that people feel when they talk about coming to Rwanda. Are you going to keep it open like that? Or will there be active encouragement of uh, a certain type of tourist? Uh, like I said, I think it's, it, it's, it's going to depend on what we offer and develop as products. Yeah. So, um, and, and for now, of course, we, because one, our capacity. Two, I keep going back to conservation because even if you look at the gorilla, for example, um, we are limited. We can only get 80 people to track yeah. on, on a given day. Sure. Um, so the question becomes, how do you then use 80 permits mm. and capitalize on those 80 that are coming? so that they're going from the volcanoes to Nyungwe, mm. to Akagera, then Gishkwati Mukura, our new, our new park. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be developing uh, the, the right products so Absolutely. that we have economic impact yeah. for those few that visit. Yeah. Having said that, we still welcome the others. Of like course. I said, we want the students to come. Um, we want <laughs> Af other Africans to come and, and visit Rwanda and get ins inspired. Absolutely. Because I think there's beyond the targets, there's also the story um, that could inspire the rest of, of uh, the continent. Absolutely. And we, we don't want to, to leave those out. It's going to be a nice problem to have, nice problem. John, is that a strategy that you agree with? Because, of course, from your side, you want them through those plain doors as quickly as you can, don't you? Of course, we, 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 always, we always would do with lots of bums on seats. Yeah. And that's very important. And uh, uh, we recently introduced a product across our network whereby we actually package your transit through Kigali with a night out. Okay. As part of. Like Addis. Exactly. Doing. I've as seen that in of, Addis, yes. As yeah. part of uh, showcasing the country, also giving business to our hotel industry. Sure. But also, we also, we know that whoever comes in once mm. will definitely return as a tourist this time to stay longer. Yeah. So it's working. The product is, uh, is being uh, welcomed across our network. Yeah. And uh, yes, it's very important that uh, we continue getting a lot of people, especially Africans, even before we go yeah. to, to Europe, to China, to wherever we are talking about. We intra-African tourism itself. I mean, we've seen cases of lots of South Africans, lots of Nigerians. Mm -hmm. Very recently, we've seen people coming from Kenya next door. Mm -hmm. They come and spend time in Chigali. And all we are doing is we're trying to come out to again with fair levels that are basically good to the pocket and affordable. Yeah. Uh, yes, we want to make money, we want those uh, high-yielding uh, passengers, but again, like uh, uh, Ambassador Amina was saying, we have always embraced and wanted to carry as many as we can, yeah. even when the fare is not that economical, but we know that that same person yeah. will be returned Return, uh, return client. Absolutely. John, while you're at it, let me give you a nice warning. I've experienced the night over uh, issue in Addis Ababa. I have not slept in the best hotels, and I'm very unhappy when I'm booked in Addis, and I'm saying it publicly because it is not nice. Let me come to you, uh, uh, Jackie. Um, do you agree with them that this is the right way to go? Because you're seeing a shift in your market already, but is that the way to go for you? Or are you still at that stage where you're thinking, maybe numbers are really the way to go here? And then after perhaps we've established ourselves, we then begin nitpicking about who we want and who we don't want. No, I think um, one has to establish a strategy first and stay with it, and you can't, it's difficult to withdraw from it. Yeah. Um, so the way we are going definitely works for our country. 
Um, as you've said, it is, um, you know, it is a smaller country and that's to its benefit, to our benefit. But then also we have um, our products are fragile. And um, so we really have to keep that in, in, um, in the forefront of our minds. Yeah. Um, as Ambassador Yamina reiterated, conservation is so key. Um, you know, we are looking after the last of, of the mountain gorillas and For so sure. on. And so there are many of them are here now, more than 800. 800. I think we can get the latest numbers now, yeah. For a world population that is not huge, yeah. unfortunately, um, but they are growing in numbers. And this is because I think of the strategy that we have True. and focus on, on conservation and a huge focus on the environment. Yeah. Big numbers um, create a big footprint. Sure. Um, so we, we have to be careful about that. Absolutely. So I definitely agree. L let's talk about that co tourism concept because I have read anecdotes, uh, this is obviously while I was uh, preparing for this uh, show, where people talk about poachers who have been converted into the greatest defenders of Rwanda's tourism sector. Talk to us about that. How did you do that? Well, that's my favorite topic. <laughs> I, I think um, it, it really speaks to, to this, again, to the story of Rwanda and the priorities that the government has given to conservation. And when you look at the story of conservation, the successes there, really, um, it, 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 um, it um, gives credit to the governance. You, you cannot succeed in conservation and fail elsewhere. Yeah. It's as simple as I've that. I've got some great examples that I could share with you from Southern Africa. The, the, the reality is um, to, to achieve conservation, um, the conservation results we've achieved, it takes one governance, uh, one, one having a strategy and implementing that strategy. Right, right. Uh, it takes good governance. It takes working with law enforcement. And the most exciting part is the campaigns that have gone out to the communities. Yeah. And, and having government and, and communities work hand in hand mm. in protecting the national parks. Yeah. Um, so you're not fighting uh, poaching with, with guns. Yeah. You are convincing your population that yeah. this is for the greater good of, of, of all. Absolutely. I have said it. If my stomach is empty, no matter how many slogans you shout at me, I'm going to right. go in the bush at night when everyone is asleep, I'll steal a little bit and hope I'm not caught and come back and give my family so we survive. Sure. And so the story with the, 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 the ex poachers for example, who yes. have become guide, yes. is such, such an attraction now. It's actually part of our marketing strategy because people want to come and see, visit that country that has succeeded. Uh, but it takes, like I said, good governance because um, it, it's not just by empty words. Absolutely. You have to feed these families. You have to give them yeah. an alternative. Mm. They go into uh, the illegal activities for a reason. Yeah. They have to yeah. feed their families. Absolutely. And today, the government of Rwanda has set aside 5% of revenues um, that come from the national parks. Uh, going back into the communities, um, it, it's part of that. So sure. it's not only the 5%, it's organizing yeah. communities. Uh, we have beautiful stories mm. of um, communities that have uh, that created um, uh, cooperatives. Yeah, out um, of uh, the revenues yes, that we get back yes. from the government. So beekeeping activities and um, memorabilia and uh, many other activities yeah. that still are related to tourism. But it took concerted effort mm. uh, by, by government to have it to have it done correctly and implemented yeah. correctly. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, that is part of uh, what is selling Rwanda today. Is, is it cheap criticism to say that you guys were able to do it because it's a small place and it's a, uh, shall we say, uh, a smaller number of people to deal with? Actually, it's harder. You know why? Mm -hmm. Why? We have the one of the highest uh, density in population. Mm -hmm. Rwanda is the uh, most desolated so, uh, so country So when you think of, if you look at those numbers, we have human population growing, we have wildlife population growing, and our land is not expanding. And you have the longest border with the DRC, which we know has been unstable for many, many years. But even there, there's a success story because we have collaboration, a transboundary collaboration. And uh, among the three countries within the Greater Virunga, uh, that is home to the mountain gorillas, we actually have come up with a strategy to protect the mountain gorillas. Sure. Is that a story that you hear often, Jackie? Uh, which one? <laughs> the, 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 the story of the poachers who have become defenders, it's the, the, our the life. communities that have been transformed. 
It's it's a Rwanda success one of the Rwanda success stories. It's a beautiful item on the tourism itinerary yeah. to see um, poachers become entrepreneurs. Um, one of the examples that uh, Ambassador Yamina has given is they've become guides and porters, yeah. and our tourists absolutely love it that they are contributing to keeping people out of the forest illegally. Mm -hmm. That they are in another way protecting the gorillas as well. Mm -hmm. They have created the ex poachers um, uh, a village showcasing Rwandan life. So this is what I mean by they they. They have become entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. We pay an interest fee, fee to go in there. Yeah. And it's a win-win for everybody. Our tourists enjoy seeing what Rwanda is about traditionally. Yeah. And um, the ex-poachers uh, gain an income. So it is a beautiful story. Yeah, John, I saw you nodding your head vigorously. <laughs> I, I, I'm definitely in agreement. I'm in agreement. I mean, it's, uh, I would say it's one of those rare concepts that finally work. I mean, mm. turning, I wish we were all, all over the world able to turn all the, 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 the ex-criminals into Absolutely. law abiding yeah. and citizens. supportive citizens. And productive citizens. Yes. Productive citizens. The world would be a better place to live. Yeah. I think this is happening. But also, we've also seen it, I think, beyond the poachers. We've also seen some of uh, the kids that used to be out in the street that uh, have been converted through associations sure. into very productive citizens. So I think it's a, it's a trend that, uh, I mean, in, in Rwanda, we, we even go beyond that. We have some, uh, uh, would I say, ex-killers 21 years ago that were killers in yeah. this country. We are, we are involved in, co in, the, in the committing of genocide sure. that have been turned around and today are very constructive s citizens that live side by side with the rest of the country. So absolutely. I think we are good absolutely. at uh, that conversion. So, absolutely. All, all contributing to building a brand Rwanda. We are discussing uh, the future of Rwanda's tourism, and uh, I have been speaking to uh, the Chief Tourism Officer of the Rwanda Development Board, Ambassador Yamina Karitanyi. Uh, we also have uh, John Mirenga, CEO of Rwanda, and uh, Jake Sibagani, Managing Director of Thousand Hills Expeditions. After the other, the other side, when we come back from the break, we're going to be talking about the regional strategy. How do we mix Rwanda into a region that is rich in tourism, as we all know from years before we've got, uh, of course, Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest point. Of course, we've got uh, the Maasai Mara and many other tourist attractions. Uh, join us after the break. Welcome back. You are watching a special CNBC Africa broadcast on uh, Rwanda's tourism sector where we are asking the question what happens after the gorillas and what we're hearing is that there is a broad plan to make sure that while the gorillas are here to last because their numbers have been increasing, there's certainly a plan to make sure that tourism uh, remains the biggest uh, success story in Rwanda that it has been since the country's uh, emergence since the genocide. Okay, so let me reintroduce my guests for this discussion. I have got uh, Ambassador uh, Yamena Karitani, Chief Tourism Officer of Rwanda Development Board uh, helping me to understand where the airplay comes in is John Mirenga, CEO of Rwanda, and JB Cheki Sebagani, Managing Director at Thousand Hills Expeditions. Ambassador, let me start with you and talk about uh, the regional strategy. Because as I was saying earlier, you've got a very strong competitor in Nairobi and Kenya and Tanzania and Ethiopia. So East Africa as a whole is rich as a tourism destination. How do you differentiate yourself to, in order to able to make Rwanda stand? or do you need to actually differentiate yourself? Well, I think we complement each other. Right. Um, it's, uh, uh, we're always uh, mindful of the fact that when one country, one neighbor is, uh, is, is improving and rising, it brings the rest with, with it. Um, so when Nairobi is doing well, we are doing well. In fact, when Nairobi suffers, yeah. uh, I think Jackie can attest to that. We suffer. As well. We lose, we lose tourists. When there are terrorist attacks in, uh, in yes, Kenya, as we have said. Yes, because less tourists going into Nairobi uh, means less tourists coming into, into Rwanda because usually it's a package that uh, um, includes more than one country. Right. And so we suffer. Uh, economically, we suffer because less money is circulating within the region. Sure. So it is. it is in our interest um, that 
our region grows. Yeah. Um, and so we all work together. I think you, you are very aware of uh, the new initiatives uh, uh, within the East Africa community. Yes. One of them being the Northern Corridor Integration Projects. Yeah. Um, that looks at, uh, you know, um, maybe advancing some of the strategies uh, that, that should be pushing us into achieving integration. Mm. So it is complementary rather than... Um, uh, Fighting with each other, competing yes, with each other, yes. to actually take customers away from each other. Right, and, and what, what we just have to be careful with is making sure that we, again, complement each other yeah. in the products that we are offering. Absolutely, that's what I was going to say. You need the product as well. Why are you complementing the others? Otherwise, you get left behind. Exactly. Yeah. Are you seeing any benefit out of that play? Definitely. Um, there's more offering. There's, there's, you offer more right. as, as a unit, as a regionally as opposed to singly as a, as, as a country. Right. And um, as uh, Ambassador Yamina has said, our, we are very complementary to what the rest of the countries in the region yeah. have to offer. But do you market yourself on your own, or do you market, when you, when you market uh, a thousand years expedition, do you talk about coming to East Africa? How do you do it? We talk about coming to East Africa. We're very aware that the normal traveler is going to go to more than one country. Mm. So it is to our benefit to talk about, you know, the, the, the greater region as it is. Sure. Um, and, and as we, when we go as a region, we, we have more to offer and therefore um, we're a better choice. Mm. As I said earlier, the leisure traveler has the whole world ahead of them. And if we can offer more yeah. and, um, you know, now we have the one, t one uh, visa, um, uh, it, it just makes things so much easier. Sure. And it, it just pulls more country into the package and which is wonderful. Yeah. Um, I want to tell our audience that, uh, so sorry, our, uh, our viewers that we've got an audience that we're going to come to very shortly. Before we do, John, um, a friend of mine always says that Rwanda had it easy because Uganda has got no national airline and immediately when you guys came up, immediately you went into Entebbe because there was nothing, there was a vacuum. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we're not operating from an island. <laughs> I mean, uh, the, 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 the character of uh, our industry is that uh, you can no longer draw boundaries. Sure. Because in the sky there is no boundary. Anyway. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, Uganda is still served by a lot more airlines that, uh, Other than, that, uh, than uh, what used to be uh, Uganda. Yes. And in any case, Uganda was really a very small player yeah. in the whole picture. Do you have an advantage as a regional player, though, against the big boys that are coming in? And I know it's a whole discussion yes. about the impact of Emirates and all these other foreign airlines coming onto the continent. Look, there's no doubt. We understand the continent better than anybody else coming from without the continent. And probably the other factor is that we can be able to deploy would I say, lighter assets mm -hmm. onto the continent other than what anybody coming from outside sure. the continent will need to. Yeah. So with more regional aircraft that are less on maintenance and fuel mm -hmm. consumption, mm -hmm. we're able to do shuttles that are within an hour or two that somebody else will need a white body for. Yeah. So we are better positioned to, do, to serve the, the, the continent way better than somebody coming from outside the continent. Mm. Of course, the fact is that we need to continuously work on the regulatory environment within the continent itself. Right. So that we take away all those uh, uh, hurdles that are continuously placed when you go out to look for rights to serve certain markets. <coughs> we are seeing that starting to happen, especially in the East African market where we, where we belong. Mm. I mean, with the Northern Corridor initiatives and so on. Everybody, I think this is now being handled at the highest level uh, of our governments yeah. and leadership, that East Africa should soon be designated as a single block of airspace, basically domesticated. Right. Hence, Absolutely. all the excessive charges, all the excessive taxes that are normally uh, charged to international uh, travelers yeah. would gradually calm down, right. make the ticket much cheaper, get our people off the road to fly more. Because that's where the, the catch is. Absolutely. I mean, we're spending a lot of time 
is uh, safety issues, uh, wasted resources, yeah. with most of our businessmen mm -hmm. and women still mm -hmm. prying the region on buses. We need to get them into the flying fold and hence get their business to move faster sure. and better. Tell me, John, have you seen a spread from two events? One, when the government uh, said all Africans are welcome, you'll pay your visa at the airport if, you're, if, if you require a visa. And secondly, when there was the introduction of uh, the, 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 the ability of East Africans, Ugandans, uh, Kenyans, and Rwandans to go to each of those countries using their national IDs. Definitely there has been, uh, I mean, it has had its own impact. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that all African passport holders can just simply jump on the next Rwanda Air or any other uh, airline yeah. and come to Chigali yeah. and be issued with a, a visa on arrival. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's like a miracle. I mean, especially <laughs> it is a miracle. G g g going from where we, we, yeah. we were yeah. and where most of Africa or the other 53 countries My hand is up, John, because remember, are. I come from Southern Africa and uh, I still can't go I in mean, any of the other exactly, regional countries exactly. without so, a visa. So that has one endeared a lot of uh, Africans mm -hmm. to this country. I mean, for once they've found a country that is welcoming. After all, Africa has always been one piece of land, landmass that sure. who knows where you started your journey, where your ancestors started your journey. Ah, true. You probably started your journey from Rwanda or even yeah. beyond Rwanda and ended up in Southern yeah. Africa. That's true. So that has really worked miracles for us and it's really a good, you look, a good in yeah. indicator that I think a lot of our brothers and sisters need to emulate. Sure. Secondly, in regard to the single visa, for very obvious reasons, I mean, think of the inconvenience that used to be for a tourist that has come from the, the US or anywhere else, mm -hmm. having to be going around seeking a visa with different regulations at different points. That's true. One wants three weeks, another one wants a month, and another, another one is not even interested. Yeah. Getting a single visa at the first point of entry, and that visa can run that tourist in the whole yeah. sub-region. Yeah. So it's working. It's working very well. It's yeah. working for them. Yeah. It's also working for us. At the end of the day, yeah. we are a, a, we are we are a very strong regional operator. Absolutely. Between the the, the member states. So yeah. It's it's. I love the word voice. you use. I love the word you use, John. It's a miracle. Absolutely. Let's take the discussion now to our audience. If I can ask you, please, to identify yourself, be as pithy as you can be, and of course, if it's a comment, make your sh comment short and sharp. And if it's a question, let's have it short and sharp as well. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Stephen Mangwa. I'm a lecturer in Rwanda Tourism University College. Uh, my, my comment is that I all strongly agree that the tourism, tourism in Rwanda is going to continue, is will continue to grow, basing on, as a trainer, on the fact that today, last, since the last five years, we are producing professionals sure. in tourism at graduate level, hmm. which was not the case before. Sure. And I believe these people are going to work in the hospitality and hmm. the tourism and the airline companies hmm. and offer better and quality service un uh, unlike before. Sure. So this improved service will boost the tourism industry. Oh, absolutely. And I think uh, the CEO of Rwanda, I think, and I agree with me, um, I've seen some people working there who are former graduates. For sure. And I think they are, they are the ones who are contributing to the growth of the That's true. <laughs> that is, absolutely. That's one factor. Yeah. Another factor that is going to lead to the growth is that uh, the management of our parks, which are the major areas that are visited yeah. is also improving. Case of Akagera, where the lion, lions have been reintroduced, where fencing is being done yeah. to prevent or to limit human wildlife conflict, which ends up in the death of the animals. Sure. So that one also will contribute to many people coming because okay. of the lion. Okay. The other is that another park called Nyungwe, there is a product there which many other countries don't have, the canopy walk show. That one has been there for the last four years or so, or three. But and it, since it came, the domestic tourists especially are yeah. increasing. And I think they will continue to increase if there is more marketing of, the, of that product. Right now, I think very many people don't know it. Mm. 
So with the continued marketing of the product, sure. we'd increase especially domestic tourists yeah. and many other factors. There are other areas which are not yet exploited. Please, like the tourist activities which are water-based. They were the boating, the sport riding, the sure, sport fish. Sure. All those, we have a lot of lakes in Akagera, Chivu, okay. but some of those activities are not yet there. So once developed yeah. and marketed, more people will come and we shall get the growth going Some on. Some ideas for you, Jackie, definitely. <laughs> exactly. yeah, That's yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> Nodding your head. Okay, let's have some more comments. Yeah, give it to him, please. Uh, they're asking if you can also stand up so that uh, okay. they can get a very clear shot of you. Thank you. We are glad to be with you in this discussion with my team. I'm also from RTUC. Okay. My name is Innocent Gahigana. I'm the head of Travel and Tourism Department. Uh, the brain behind what he was telling you. Sure. Really, we appreciate what is happening in the industry, tourism industry, because all those targets of which they are highlighting, to, to us, it becomes an opportunity sure. where to train. Right. That's yeah. true. Yeah, it uh, really, whenever we hear Rwanda are targeting this, RDB targeting this, to us it becomes the opportunity yeah. to train yeah. for the, the future professionals. Thank you very much for that comment. Yeah. Uh, John and Jackie, we often hear actually there's a disconnect between what is produced in the schools and the person who comes and works for you and in the, your requirements of those people. Are you seeing an alignment of sorts? Uh, should I go first? Please. Okay, uh, definitely a lot is happening. Uh, for sure, the, we have a very special relationship with some of these institutions, especially our teams. Are you getting appropriate product? And we have been consulted at times in terms of the content. Okay. That uh, of the quality, I mean of the, 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 the syllabus that they need to impact uh -huh. in their students. Uh -huh. And progressively we are seeing improved products right. that come out. Uh -huh. So I've also recently learned that I think they soon be introducing uh, hostess uh, training and mm. uh, of course they do a lot of customer care trainings. Sure. So we, we're getting better, okay. there's no doubt. So check it quickly. Uh, the alignment is certainly improving. Um, we have uh, the Chamber of Tourism that actually sits us all in one um, circle round table where we can have these discussions and I think this is one of the reasons where um, the, you know basically uh, demand and need you know are, are, yeah. are aligned so it's, it's definitely improving okay it's okay to complain by the way and it's okay to complain okay let's take in some more comments yeah. If you could allow me, like oh, we three. need to give others a chance, eh? I will, I will, because there was uh, questions which I wanted to put to Mr. Very Mirelli. Quickly. If someone would hear their plans to expand to Europe, then issue of price, as per the freight, could come in. Because Africa is known as expensive, okay. it comes the freight. I would like if you could highlight more on that. Okay. Then another question to Ambassador: If someone followed what you are presenting, you highlighted more. Mass tourism, uh, sorry, mass tourism and nature tourism. One would wonder, element of culture, is it left mm. out or it is on board? Okay. Another question to Jackie. Oh, you have yes. got too many questions. I'm going to cut yes. your last if someone, question. If someone would uh, pick interest in coming to Rwanda and hear gorillas, 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 couldn't you be having any other package around for someone who would not be able to visit gorillas, if, given the fact the number is limited? Could you be having another package which could be substituted? Okay, let's take in those answers very quickly if we can. John, can you start, to start with you and then we'll move quickly? What I would say in terms of uh, fair levels, if you look about, uh, at uh, the last 10 years that we've seen, be it intercontinental fairs or the African, intra African fairs, yes. have all significantly come down. That's I true. could even press my finger on a 40% reduction over the period. Reason contributed mainly by stiff competition. More players, more capacity being thrown yeah. into the markets. Uh, one day, we do our part. I mean, we are a player on the continent and I want to play even beyond the continent. Yeah. Definitely, if the trend on the world oil pricing continues the way it is, yeah. I can assure you uh, fares will even be lower than what we are seeing today. Long may those oil prices come down. Mm -hmm. Check it. Um, it is in our interest as a company and the whole of private sector to sell more than the gorillas. 
and this is one of the reasons why I highlighted the different things that Rwanda has to offer right at the beginning in terms of Akagera, Nyungwe, Congo Nile Trail and so on. So we do as, as much as possible to sell more than the gorillas, to sell so much of what Rwanda has to offer, including culture. So um, yes, Rwanda has a lot to offer and that is our literally our basis of us going out. It's um, gorillas and beyond and it's in our interest, all of us, as we sit here, to sell more than the gorillas. Yeah, it's almost like uh, you took a peek at our debate because we called the debate Rwanda Tourism dash gorillas and beyond. Yeah. Ambassador? Well, I, just to add on what Jackie just said, um, we have seen numbers increasing for um, tourists coming looking at more products than the gorillas. So it's, we're moving in the right direction. Uh, um, that's one. Two, yes, of course there's culture. There is religious tourism. It's just that uh, the forum didn't allow for, for us to develop. But um, you know, we have Kiveho, for example, which is uh, one of the holy sites. Uh, actually, the, the only one in Africa. The only one, yes. And uh, we are developing infrastructure. We are speaking with the Catholic Church to improve that. And there are many other. There's Gahini. There, there are many other um, products. Um, if you look at religious tourism, culture, for sure. Um, we are thinking of having more uh, events around culture, one of them uh, being in Hazur Gwanda, so that we can um, highlight um, um, the, the, the importance of, of uh, our cows uh, and many other initiatives that uh, will, will take us beyond the gorilla, for yeah. sure, and beyond our parks. Yeah, Ambassador, I want you to think about uh, your targets in terms of uh, the contribution of each of the major sectors, but let's take up some more questions. Uh, let's get a lady this time. Yes, thank you. Thank you. My name is Diana uh, from Rwanda Tourism University. I had the question. Uh, we had about East African tourists and then international tourists. But I didn't hear anything about local tourists. And we all know the local people are actually the ambassadors. So what are the strategies to actually give, I mean, uh, sensitize or educate Rwandese yeah. in yeah. the country about tourism products that you have? Because I've been to some of the tourist attractions in Rwanda, and every time I post a picture, people are like, "Wow! So, what? How do you? How do I get there? How much do I pay?" So, I think there's more to teach about local communities, not the people that are actually working there, because those already know. I mean, sure. they, they they entertain all the tourists and stuff. So, what are the strategies to actually encourage local people to yeah. actually? to tourism. Thank you. Getting Rwandans to know Rwanda. I saw the initiative in Kenya where they were getting, giving people leave so they are able to visit the coast. We, we actually have started, um, but I, I will have to agree, we started late. But now we have a campaign for domestic tourism. And we are seeing the, the, the numbers uh, increase. Uh, we are targeting schools as well so that uh, we start at a younger age, uh, people getting to experience and appreciate what uh, Rwanda has to offer. Um, we, so we are increasing uh, our numbers there. We are increasing our campaigns um, for all segments of, of uh, our population and for the experts that are living in Rwanda as well. Right. Understanding that uh, those that will sustain our tourism uh, are locals. They will always be here. They will always um, uh, visit Rwanda before they go outside. So yeah. it, it is. It is our responsibility as RDB, but also as the private sector, to come yeah. up with packages that are that that could be uh, attractive to to our local market. And to an extent, you are doing it, isn't it? Because to see a gorilla, I think to go on those gorilla trekking things, you pay fifty dollars if you're Rwandan, seven fifty mm -hmm. for it. Sure, actually a bit less. Than, it's, it's thirty thousand uh, Rwandan francs for for local. So we have good pricing for, yeah. for locals, but the question, the, the point is, are we advertising it enough and are yeah, we are targeting? Yeah, is know enough about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's take in uh, some more questions. Where is the microphone? Yes, you mm -hmm. already have it, sir. Go for it. Thank you so very much for having me. My name is Witton Samuel from RTUC, Rwanda Tourism University College. So I, no one have mentioned about the customer service thing. We are we're talking about the tourism growth in Rwanda, but we, we need to go back and think about those service providers. So I would wish we have someone from maybe hotels and restaurants, because they are the ones who receive our tourists. And if they mess up, we mess up all. 
So we need to like have some trainings of those customer service providers mm. to provide service to those tourists sure. who want to see the, the gorillas for longer stays. Because you find out that, from my experience, I've seen so many comments on big tour guides and, and hotel receptionists who, who provide poor service. Sure. And then that makes the, the clients all come back. Mm. He likes the gorillas, but yeah. the service is not good. Yeah. So we should go back and train the subsidy providers. Yeah. And we find the problem maybe to ambassador. The problem is not we have pro good service providers like in our college where the graduates who have who can provide customer service. Are you looking for but a the job? Problems, I'm not looking for a job. <laughs> I'm just saying yeah. the. The, the owner of the tourism establishments sure. pro yeah. recruits, they, 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 yeah. have, they don't recruit good customer pro providers. Yeah. So I would wish if they can consult our like college and the other schools sure. to, to give them the best candidates for yeah. those. It's an important point that he makes. I think, John, you will recall at the press conference when you were announcing the signing of this agreement with Airbus, uh, the executive vice president, I think, for Europe for Airbus said that he came on a one-day flight and he was very nicely treated. Now, you can imagine that comment coming the other way around and this air hostess probably had no clue who she was dealing with. Exactly. It's an important story to tell. Okay, let's take in some more questions. Yes, uh, yeah, let's take in the last two, actually. So you, sir, and then perhaps the guy at the back. Uh, thank you very much. Um, my name is Victoria Dennis Peter, a student from RTC, but who's been serving into tourism companies so uh, the first uh, the first the first question goes to mr. John whereby uh, we'd really like to hear all about like air alliances being more in terms of uh, developing tourism in Rwanda of which this had has been uh, a problem even in terms of in terms of uh, he has talked about the service providers in terms of customer care leave alone customer care in terms of even even employing people whereby um, employment can be done on who is, who is known. Whereby you're having skilled labor, which is supposed to be there to help you in order to, to boost the business. And here you're recruiting people who are not supposed to be in the same field. Okay. So um, what are you saying? I'm trying to say that here, as RTC or other sectors, like people, skilled labor who are well enough to support air, uh, uh, air, air, let's say air alliances, or to deal with the cargo crew, uh -huh. such, then in terms of employing, they need to look who are supposed to be sure in that field. Okay. Then another question goes to the goes to the, to the ambassador. Uh, good enough, you've talked about the conservation, but I'm doing a, my problem is all about the conservation, the volcanoes. So here, I wanted to know all about corruption because corruption sometimes hinders our, our growth in terms of tourism whereby people having enough like I want to enter to the park but now here I'm limited so okay. whereby I need to deal with the, the tour guide mm. or the person who's in charge of that mm. so that I enter into that okay. into the park then and yeah, the last sure. question was all about the effect that could come out if the tourism sector had already, already realized the problem that is coming all about the, the weather changes so that it cannot affect the tourism growth in Rwanda. Thanks. Climate change. Okay, let's talk corruption, I think. Before corruption, I wanted to touch on the, the comment. The point uh, that he made. The, okay. the point before. We now have a tourism law. So that will help us um, making sure that uh, the standards are uh, adequate mm. in, the, in the industry. So I just wanted to to say that uh, one of the challenges we had before, we didn't have a law. Right. We didn't have guiding principles, and now okay. they're there, and that will help us. Okay. Corruption, I, I'm not sure I get you, because for you, if you're doing research, uh, what you do is you write to us, and we give you entrance. You don't need to go and talk to the guide on the side. You do it officially, you write to either the chief park warden or to the RDB tourism department, and we give you access. Uh, so you don't need to pay anybody to have uh, uh, entrance fees and uh, I mean to be able to to be allowed in the park right um, that I just wanted to clarify that ambassador Yamina Karitani chief tourism officer Rwanda development board I should say actually outgoing uh, chief tourism officer Rwanda development board because she's headed to the UK where of course she's going to be this telling the story of our brand Rwanda. and I key read I think really the key is that the brand has been built and it continues to grow thank you very much for watching today's program and thank you for your comments if you've got any please do so join us
us uh, at the CNBC Africa hashtag. Thank you for watching today and goodbye.